Welcome back, everybody. I wanted to do a video and discussion on the first year of beekeeping and the things that you need to be concerned with and focus on learning. The reason why I, I say that is there's a lot of things that you don't need to worry about in your first year of beekeeping. I'm thinking back to when I was a first year beekeeper you don't know anything about it. So how do you know what to focus on to learn um, how to keep bees? And a lot of times you're tying up your emotional resources with information that you don't really need at this point in time. Now, I'm not saying the things that aren't important in year one are never to be considered because come year two, those things are actually going to become very important. I created an outline. This is actually for me to reference, so I stay in order because I did everything in pretty much order that you need to kind of be concerned with. So the first thing is going to be your hive setup. This is going to entail setting up your equipment and installing your bees. By this point, you should have already researched what kind of equipment you want. I have a video, my very first video, I think, explaining all the components of a hive, how the Langstrom hive works. So that is your very first step to setting up your equipment. You probably want to set it up maybe you know a day or two before you get your bees, just so it's one less thing you have to worry on bee delivery day. Uh, you want to just basically get those bees in that box so you can now kind of regroup and breathe easy. Step two, give them what they need. So upon installing your bees, you want to give them some feed. Uh, if you've gotten a new should have come with you know frames of brood in all stages and resources some honey and some pollen i would still feed your bees the stores that came with the new are going to be just enough to sustain the population that's in there now you want them to start building and they're going to start mowing through their stores the little stores that come with it uh, package bees definitely one-to-one -one. You know, because they're going to, like I said, that, that, that encourages wax building. They have what they need. The very first question that's going to arise is when do I add a second box or a brood chamber if you're running double? If you're in the beekeeper, you probably are. It's the most common thing to do. I, I imagine you're probably going to choose to run double brood chambers. Uh, you add your second box when the first box is 80% drawn. When the wax foundations are drawn out on 80% of your frames and they're actually working, what I mean by working is they're actually doing something with it. Either the queen started laying them, they started putting some nectar in them, bringing in the pollen. Um, that's what I mean by working. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. That seems to be the standard stock answer. I've never heard anybody really stray from the 80%. I've never heard an argument about somebody saying, no, it's not 80%. Next. You want to perform your weekly inspections. So you want to start preparing for your weekly inspections. Now, I like to use the term breathe easy. You're, you're, everything you do, you're trying to get to a spot where you did everything you could for that time period and not worry about it. So you get everything all set up, your bees are installed, you got your feeders on there. One week is when you should probably perform your first inspection. Let them settle in. You're going to settle in, you're going to kind of cool off, regroup, maybe do a little bit of research, and start preparing for your next you know, step. I would say on day three, maybe you could check those feeders to make sure that they still have feed in them. Um, they are going to take that feed fast as a new package or new food. So you're going to start performing your inspections, which brings us to the next topic of what to look for during inspections. This is really, really important. Uh, so many new beekeepers, myself included, you know, thinking back to 10 years ago, um, you open up that hive and you start pulling frames and looking at them. And then you're putting the frame back, maybe taking some pictures. Uh, and you're not really noticing anything because you don't know what to look for. Uh, that's not a, a a criticism. That's just the way it is with most people, I imagine. You know, uh, 
you hear people asking questions, oh, my bees are doing this, and then the experienced beekeeper has a follow-up, like, well, how much brood do you see? How much cat brood? What's the population like? And the response from the new beekeeper would be like, oh, I think there's a good amount of bees in there. You, you got to really be detailed, especially if you're going to ask other people online. You really want to paint a nice picture. And the way to do that is to take in what you're seeing. So go into your hives with purpose and know what you're looking for. The first thing you're going to notice when you pop that lid is the population. You're going to see how many bees are up top. So don't focus on that just yet. When you start pulling frames, the first thing you really want to look for is going to be eggs or a queen. You want to verify that your hive is clean right. Obviously, that's the most important thing in the hive is that one so you have to verify queen rightness. You don't necessarily have to find a queen. If you find eggs, you have a queen or at least had one three days ago. Uh, the next thing you want to look for is larva. And that larva is going to be in all stages. You want to make sure you have larva in all stages because that shows a consistent queen that is actually building, not turning on and off, on and off. In a newly installed package or a new, they are going to start building and it should be pretty consistent. Another reason why you want to look for larva is it helps you find eggs. <laughs> eggs are really hard to see. When you look for larva, you'll see it as a gradient. And that's kind of what got me to recognize eggs. Um, you'll find really big larva and you'll kind of see it, especially in a newer hive, kind of. The larva getting smaller, 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 smaller. These tiny little, you know, these little tiny looking seeds that are barely glistening in the bottom of the cell. And then those next cells are probably going to be eggs and they lay back. So they're easy to see. A freshly laid egg is going to be standing straight up. That's why they're really hard to get to see. Day one eggs are really tricky to see. Then they start laying down and you get more surface area of that little egg. People say it looks like a grain of rice. Uh, I understand why they say it looks like a grain of rice, but that's deceiving because it's nowhere near the size of a grain of rice. So everybody's looking for something and they're associating with a grain of rice. It's, it's, it's not like a grain of rice. It looks like a, a bee egg. So, and it's tiny. So the next thing you want to look for is cat fruit. You may not find that on your first inspection of, you know, especially if it's a package of uh, bees. When you install a new, you're going to see um, cat brew right off the bat because your new supplier should have completed brood in all stages that this can be brewed because you want people emerging to immediately start populating. So you want to find cat brew. When you're looking at the cat brew, you want to see the pattern. A brand new hive early in the season, they are in building mode, building mode. They are like in crunch time and they're going to be laying heavy and uh, so you want tight brew patterns. You want to see. You don't want to see like a shotgun pattern where it's like speckled with brew. Uh, that's an indication of some sort of indication that you want to uh, keep an, your eyes peeled for. But I, I don't think you're going to see that with a newly installed package or a newly installed. Package. You're probably going to see wood to wood cap brew. That's what you want to see and tight patterns. The next thing you want to pay attention to, you've already noticed it the minute you open your eyes, is the population. The way I take note of population without even pulling frames is I count seams. So anything in between your frames is a seam of bees. That's what I consider a seam. So when you open up that hive, note of five seams of bees. This way, your next inspection a week later, you can reference back to that and go, this hive had five seeds of bees. Now it has six, maybe seven. Kind of add a second box. You know, that's why it's very important to keep notes. You're not going to remember what you saw last week. I don't care if you have two hives. Keep notes. Uh, it's just for your own reference. So, and you can compare. Every inspection you want to compare to your last. Um, after several weeks, you know, maybe two months, and this is where, this is to my original point of there's certain things to worry about at certain times. You now have a few weeks under your belt 
let's let's say two months and just throwing an arbitrary number out there. If you want to get many inspections under your belt, you are now used to heat. Uh, you 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 kind of know what you're looking for. You you've learned. You're you're beyond your first stage of learning. Now it's time to consider how you're going to manage mites and mite control. Most people treat their bees. We're not going to get into a debate of treatment free and not treatment free. Um, I think in a first year of uh, beekeeping, a new beekeeper should always treat the bees because not treating bees is more than just simply not treating the bees. There's a lot of steps in there, and it, the people that do it successfully, there, there's a lot that goes into it. So after several weeks, you know, six, seven, eight weeks, start considering your mite treatments because it's usually the end of summer that you're going to treat your bees. That is your one of your last steps in preparing your bees for winter. And that brings me to my next point is you're always one season ahead. You know, you're always learning about winter. Um, towards the end of the summer, it's already winter. So that's when usually when you're going to treat your hive. It's the last week of summer. I have a video on treating bees if you want to watch that video. It's, it's how I treat my bees. Not exclusive. I've learned this from older keepers. It's it's uh, one of the techniques of how to manage your bees and the regimen that I use. The next and last chapter we'll call it is what not to be too concerned with in your first year. I, I'm stressing too concerned. I don't, you know, you've heard me say it before, there's no absolutes to be keeping. There's always going to be exceptions, but this video is based on a typical situation. Things that you're not going to be too concerned with in your first year, and certainly not your first few months, is how to split a hive. I wouldn't worry about that. You know, people get their bees, and some people are really, really ambitious. And like, all right, I got two hives. Let me get three bees and split them and split. And it can be done. <laughs> it can be done. But I don't think by uh, a first year beekeeper who has zero knowledge in keeping bees, uh, I, I wouldn't worry about splits. You're not gonna, certainly not going to need to split a hive because you're, it's already going to be a photo finish to getting these bees prepared for winter. And that's how you should look at it. You're just preparing your bees for winter. Uh, the next bullet point is growing your yards. That, that just ties into splits. Don't, don't just pick an arbitrary number every year and be like, oh, I have three, three hives. I want nine hives by the end of the season. No, I don't suggest you do that. Just, just worry about beekeeping 101 at this point. Splits, you know, growing your yards and coming up with you know plans for next year. That's that's kind of beyond, that's like intermediate beekeeping. And and don't get me wrong, intermediate beekeeping comes fast. You keep bees for one year and you so you know your bees survive to year two. They come out of winter, you're already an intermediate bee. So, uh, the next thing you don't really want to concern yourself with too much is swarm management. It's dangerous to say don't ever worry about it in year one. There are exceptions and it will happen, but the very vast majority of the time you're not going to have to deal with swarm management, uh, especially with pet. It's just, you know, when you install new sport packages, those bees are just fighting to build up. They're already set back. It's They're not unhealthy, but they're not what, you know, the bees are still going to strive to prepare those hives for winter. Um, the ingredients for swarming, you know, a few of them are, you know, overpopulation, no room uh, for the bees to, to lay, you know, being honey downs. Uh, Overhead pressure, you're not going to have honey supers just packing down your hive. Are you going to throw honey supers on when your second box gets 80% filled? Sure. Uh, but I wouldn't look at that as because you want to get honey. You want them to start drawing the springs out for next year because you're going to need honey supers in here too. I assure you that. Uh, and then my final thought is just try not to be over ambitious in general. Don't have these, these visions of, oh my God, I'm going to start giving honey out to my friends for Christmas time. I'm going to start a little stand out in front of my house. You're, you're probably not going to get honey your first year. And even if you did, you don't have to harvest it. Uh, so yeah, don't be over ambitious. Uh, to summarize everything, uh, 
I would say you just want to be very slow and steady. Don't push too hard. Don't think too far in advance. Um, the only long distance thinking you should be doing is for winter. Because when you first get your bees in the spring, or when you choose to get them, your mind is already on winter. The goal is to get the bees through winter. That's it. If you worry about just that, and don't clutter your mind with other things, going chasing and retrieving swarms, and pushing a business, making it a bit, should you run it as a business? I advise that. You don't want to dump too much of money into your hobby. You want to keep yourself in check of what you're spending. So, I mean, from pretty much day one, I kind of track my expenses. You're not going to get profits yet. <laughs> so, just, you don't want to throw too much money. Grow it slow. Uh, that'll, that'll get you to a point where when winter hits, you're not going to need to stress about your bees over winter because you've done everything you possibly could. Everything else is up to them and nature. So the goal is to give them everything they need to get up to winter and through winter. And then when you see it getting really cold out and you're worried about your bees, don't worry about it. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. And if your bees don't make it or one hive doesn't make it, I've mentioned this in my last video, that's information for the next year. What did I do wrong? You know, what did I do? What didn't I do? So, but you want to get to a point where you're not worried about people. Don't, don't sit there and listen to that wind howl. Last night it got down to negative three. Um, and our daytime highs today are going to be six. I'm not worried about my bees. Just not. Because I know I did everything for them. There's a couple of hives I had that were really light, and I should have gone out there and put bond on them. But, uh, you know, keeping bees is a numbers game. And when you finally do grow your hives at an appropriate time in your beekeeping journey, the more hives you have, the, the less you're going to hamper the small hive. So I was just like, you know what? These hives are marginal. I just don't have the time. I have to balance it out. And, uh, you know, I let those fly. So if they die, I'm going to know why. I'm not going to say, oh, my, they froze to death. No, they were late, and I didn't get my butt out there and put emergency feed on them like I should have. Um, I know the risk. I know the rules. Therefore, you can break the rules. You're probably going to hear me say that in a lot of my videos. It's okay to break the rules if you know the rules. So in year one of beekeeping, you don't know the rules. You just don't. You don't know how things react to what you do. Year five, six, you can kind of start coming up with your own little ways, but you also know what could happen. So I hope this video was really uh, informative and very helpful. I'm going to post this in the uh, description so you can download it, you know, print it out, take it with you, um, leave it on your phone. You can always reference it. I, I want to really try to uh, include in any video that I can some sort of reference that you can take with you so you don't go back to the video and, and remember i don't care about clicks and views. you know I, I put this up so you don't have to watch that video again if you want to watch the video again great but out in your bean yard when you're working you want to pull up your phone and try to find you know a youtube video now nah, just pull out the sheet keep this in your notebook that you will have in your beekeeping arsenal thank you for joining me and i will see everybody next